staying home like all year. Just had to do something. It's incredible to see the community come together like this. To just help out the community, just be a part of the solution and not the problem. Through the pandemic, we all found ways to keep busy. Perhaps it was a new hobby, giving back to the community, or finally getting around to that to-do list. Even after the shows were binged and the bread was baked, there were plenty of ways to stay occupied. Here at Stitch, we celebrate the ways everyday people are making this country a kinder place to live, one incredible story at a time. Our first story may inspire you to get off the couch and get moving. If you want to get in shape and you want to be healthy, there is nothing stopping you. Walter used to drive the 100 feet to get his mail. Today, he walks. When it became apparent that, that this virus was going to be everywhere, I decided, well, I've really got to do something and I've been wanting to for a long time. At the beginning of the pandemic, Walter weighed 342 pounds. He was on blood pressure medication and wanted to decrease his chances of contracting COVID-19. I started with, you know, restricting calories to 1,800. Um, when the gyms closed, I bought an elliptical machine and some weights, and I've been doing 50 minutes a day of cardio. Eventually, he added weightlifting to his regimen. I realized that that was an additional way to not only burn calories, but keep my metabolism up. And while it wasn't always easy... There were days where I would do everything right, and the scale wouldn't move. Walter's fitness routine and healthy eating plan helped him lose over 110 pounds during the pandemic. There are many days where I don't want to. There are many days where I just, you know, don't want any of this to keep continuing, but I just make myself do it. And I think that's the most important thing. No matter what, I make myself exercise. In a time where many fell into unhealthy habits. Working from home, we're so much closer to the kitchen. It can sometimes be really um, tempting for people to kind of go back and forth, snacking more all day long with with less planning involved. Walter's journey to health has helped him do more than go from a size extra large to a medium and get off his medication. He's found a new lease on life. Just really falling in love with life again. Tiny houses are all the rage, but this couple built their dream home to be especially miniature, just a few feet high, in fact. Annie and Cliff's mid-century modern home has all the amenities. A basement, garage. It has three bedrooms, one bath, an office, game room. Furnace room, laundry room. Even the electricity works. <laughs> we had never done anything like this before. At one twelfth the size of an actual home, this pandemic project kept the couple very busy. It was just a great diversion. Every single one of our family members in the house. The house is completely to scale and features family photos, an even smaller dollhouse, and delicious Kansas City barbecue on the grill. We tried to make it as realistic as possible. Some of the furniture was imported from abroad. Israel, Spain, Germany. And the bathroom features real tile and custom cut floor panels in the entryway. It was challenging figuring it out. The labor of love was more than a distraction. Annie and Cliff shared their journey on social media and included a link to the Alzheimer's Association for followers to make a donation. We can take what we created and bring awareness to the Alzheimer's Foundation. The mini modern house brings extra large joy to its over 40,000 followers. In a time when many face food insecurity, this next community leader found a way to help. Sashana was inspired by an idea she saw on social media. I was on Twitter one day and I just saw like community fridges like in different parts of the world, states, cities. There were none near her, so she surveyed Orlando Twitter about starting one. Soon, the idea was a reality. The fridge is owned by the community and not one sole person. Open to the public 24 seven, anyone can drop off food or donations and those experiencing food insecurity can get a free meal. All food must be packaged and pre-sealed, and there is no raw meat or seafood to keep things as safe as possible. I love meeting people that are switched on and passionate about what they're doing. The owner of a local supermarket was eager to help the initiative and agreed to host the fridge. To me, it's just the fulfillment of Easton's mission, which is to give a place for homegrown ideas and thought leaders to thrive and, and propagate ideas that are good for the community. Don't bother with no drama. Sushana collaborated with local artists to bring her vision to life. All the colors just kind of represent like, you know, everybody's different. We all come from different backgrounds. 
backgrounds, but we're all kind of the same. So that's why everybody has the same face at the end. When we started painting the fridge is the week I quit my job. I was so happy and so positive just working on something that was positive for the community. I didn't want to do anything else. I wanted to put my whole energy into it. The response has been wild, to be honest. I didn't really think like, it would pick up so much like interest so quickly. The fridge has overflowed with so much food, they use the excess to create goodie bags, which get handed out to those who might not be able to get to the location. There are so few people that actually do what they say they're gonna do. I mean, I'm just so proud of her. I'm so proud of her. Now that there's a second fridge, this pandemic project is already expanding. To so just help out the community, just be a part of the solution and not the problem. I love this fridge so much. Learning from home has been anything but easy for students, but woodworkers across the country have used their tools and downtime to help. I saw the need with my own students sitting in different places and stuff, and I knew if my own students needed it, someone else did. As families adjusted to remote learning, Nate and others realized many students didn't have the necessary workspace at home. He started building free desks for students. We've got some uh, phenomenal feedback from people of just how grateful they are that their child has a, a space to grow and learn at home. Uh, they weren't able to either afford it on their own or weren't able to find one. His work became so popular, he got some help from two dozen college athletes. We're all from different backgrounds. Like some of us that were here today grew up on farms and they're super familiar with tools and woodworking, like the drill, it's all that. And then some of us are from cities and have never done any sort of building project like this before. And I said, you know what, uh, 25, 30 years of woodworking, I can do that. On the other side of the country, an Air Force veteran had a similar idea. Folks that can't afford to get a desk for their kids are still getting a desk for their kids. At first, he used his own money to make 25 desks free of charge for students. Word spread, another veteran joined Bob, and they received a $1,000 donation from a local business to cover the funds. I've almost replenished my bank account completely. And we have gotten enough to continue building desks every day, all day. It's incredible to see the community come together like this. Helping students focus on what they need to at home and making a difficult situation easier, Bob says it's priceless. It means so much to be able to provide a kid with a, a desk, a, a, a place they, that they can work, a place that they can call their own, a, a, a spot that, that just is theirs. Who doesn't love a sweet treat, especially during lockdown? This teen's pandemic project was as charitable as it was delicious. Staying home like all year, just had to do something. That something Maggie did combined something she enjoys. I bake a lot just like for fun or something to do. With raising money for charity. It's just a good idea and with like COVID happening and stuff, there's a lot of people that need money right now. Maggie created Cookie Love 207 and spent her downtime baking delicious nine inch chocolate chip cookies. She offered them up in exchange for a donation. Well, it could go anywhere from like $5 to like 50. I thought it would only be like my mom's like Facebook friends or whatever, but like they kept sh like sharing our page and stuff and it just, a lot of people started to donate. The first batch raised $1,000 for the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital. When people are picking up the cookies, they might donate even more. We had that happen to us and we got $100 from one lady. Maggie and her family enjoyed their quality time together. It's good because my parents are always there like helping me and we have like the music playing. It is fun because we're just making cookies. And Maggie enjoyed the time she spent doing something good for her community. It feels good that I did something to help people. The performing arts was one of the industries most impacted by the pandemic. One company found a unique way to not only help their performers stay busy, but also <laughs> ensure they continued to make money. We are able to bring your Pinterest board to life. You know, the really your imagination's the limit in terms of the type of project or the type of um, creation that you could get through the Shakes Makes program. What started as an initiative to make masks for healthcare workers became a full-blown creative workshop. When the pandemic shut all of our theaters down, there's this 
nest of talent in these artisans locally that was going underutilized. Local artists use their skills to create ornaments, reupholster furniture, and create other custom projects. It's really, you know, a wonderful opportunity to say, well, have I ever seen it on stage? I could also see it in my home. The program helps members of the theater company continue to make money while also having a purpose and freedom to do what they love. You have a lot of people that are wrestling now, even those who have managed to find transitional employment during this time or supplemental employment during this time, struggling with a lack of job joy um, and work fulfillment. It's been a great way for us to stay in touch with people that might be a patron for us on our main stage typically and now have a different way to engage with us um, or even just find a way to support us during this time. How did you stay busy during the pandemic? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Stitch.